Do you feel like you have a creative mind? Let's test it. I'm gonna show you five different images and your job is to interpret each image that you see. And the idea is, is that if you're a creative person, you'll come up with answers different than the most common answers. Keep track of your answers and comment them down below. Okay, let's go. So for me, number one was a syringe, but the most common answer was a candle. Okay, here comes number two. For me, number two was feet in a circle, and the most common answer was footprints in a circle. So it was pretty much exactly what it was. So here I saw a compass, and the most common answer was a compass. So this one was a little more difficult for me. I saw a test tube kind of with germs, but the most common answer was a giraffe's neck. So when I saw this one, I thought of gears, like gears in a car, but the most common answer was lights. So I guess my score was a three out of five for creative thinking, but comment your results down below. Now who really knows if this is actually a true test to see how creative you are? I guess the main idea of it is if your thinking is different from the majority, you must be creative. But either way, whether this test showed that you're super creative or not creative at all, practicing strengthening your creative muscles is something that anyone can benefit from. I know for me personally, I've never really considered myself a creative person. I think it's because I've seen a lot of people around me or a lot of people that I look up to come up with amazingly creative and original ideas. But the truth is, is that a lot of the times, creative people are literally copying things that they've seen before and love. For example, multiple directors have taken scenes from other movies for their movies. Quentin Tarantino himself was quoted saying, great artists steal. They don't do homages. A few examples of this happening in Hollywood are in movies like The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, and the scene where the characters see the Black Gate of Mordor and they're at the rocks is very similar to a scene in The Wizard of Oz where the characters are also sitting behind rocks and watching the army of the Wicked Witch of the West. Another example of this stealing happens in the movie Back to the Future, which is, by the way, my favorite movie of all time. It's an incredible movie. But it's the iconic scene where Doc Brown is hanging from the clock, trying to plug in the disconnected cable, is exactly the same as a scene from the 1923 movie called Safety Last, in which the character, Harold Lloyd, is also hanging from a clock. And a cool little Easter egg that not many people know about is in the first couple minutes of Back to the Future, when they're showing all the clocks, they actually show a clock with the character Harold Lloyd from that movie hanging on it. Kind of a mix between an Easter egg and foreshadowing. Now you, like me, may look up to people we see as creative geniuses and want to be more like them. We may think that they're just born with this innate creativity, but the truth is, is creativity can be practiced and learned. Just like learning an instrument, learning guitar, drums, a trumpet. At first, you may not be that great, but the more effort you put into fostering your creativity, the more creative you'll be. So I'm gonna give you four practical things that you can do to get better at being creative. Number one, steal. Now we talked a little bit about this before, but I wanted to expand on this just a little bit more. So the best way to steal is to take inspiration from others and use it as the foundation of your own work. In his book, Steal Like an Artist, Austin Kleon says, start copying what you love. Copy, 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 copy. At the end of the copy, you'll find yourself. So essentially what he's saying is that the more people you copy from, the more you start to develop your own style. If you only copy one person and do everything that they do, you're just another version of them. But if you copy 10 people and take little things from each one of them and bring it into your own work, you're now creating something that's completely original. So a small exercise that you can do is write down five or 10 people that inspire you and try to pinpoint one or two things that each one of them does that you can steal and use in your own work. Number two, write. In whatever field you're in, whether you're a YouTuber, a filmmaker, a photographer, or a designer, write down every single idea that comes to mind. Don't trust your brain when it says, oh, I'll remember that later. Your brain is lying to you and trying to trick you. 
don't believe it. For example, when I get an idea for a YouTube video, I write it down, no matter how stupid or weird I think it is at the time, or if I think it won't work, most of the time I end up ditching a lot of those ideas, I have had those weird ideas spark ideas for other things. Number three, practice boredom. We're so overstimulated that we don't sit and give ourselves time to come up with new ideas. Not to be cheesy, but it's similar to when there's so much ambient light because of the lights from the city that we can't see the stars as clearly at night. In the same way, we're constantly bombarded with Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter notifications that we don't give ourselves time to just sit and think. So try to practice sitting in silence and doing nothing. A lot of the times we wanna escape boredom because it's boring. Try to see boredom as a good way to be more creative. Number four, set time aside. Set an intentional time to practice creativity. Employees at Google ask their teams to put at least 20% of their time at work to creative thinking or new projects. That means that if they're working a typical eight hour day, they're spending at least an hour and a half per day practicing creative thinking. And I really believe that's why Google is known as one of the most innovative companies today. Now, if you're struggling to come up with something to do to foster or practice your creativity, try writing what's called a six word story. This comes from author Ernest Hemingway, who famously wrote for sale, baby shoes, never worn. Sit and think about that six word story for a second. It's an incredible example of how a meaningful, an emotional story can be told in just very few words. It's amazing. To take it up a notch even more, try to create a six word story from a random word that you find in a dictionary or a random word generator on the internet and go with the very first word it generates. No cheating, you have to go with the very first word that it generates. At first you may create little sentences that don't have much meaning, but as you practice this more and more, you'll find that you're able to come up with more and more creative stories. All right, so I'm gonna do this right now. I'm gonna go to random word generator. It's actually randomwordgenerator.com and we're going to create a word. So the word is, I don't know if you can see that, the word is humanity if you can't see that. Uh, it needs to be darkened a little bit, but the word is humanity. So let me see, and I'm, this is not scripted. I'm completely doing this off the cuff in my head. So. Humanity, humanity, I'm gonna start it with that. Humanity needs a personal, powerful God. That's what I'm gonna say. Humanity needs a personal, powerful God. So that's six, six words that I've used to create this story. And you can kind of go from there and you can keep going and generating words. So if I do another one, switch, we could create, we could keep going and going, but this is something that just kind of gets your brain flowing and kind of gets your creativity going. So try to 